Okay, so uh, doing the last Paragon video that I did sort of led me to reassess where I was. And it was a classic example of, you know, sometimes there are times when you, you, you don't mentally process like, eh, this isn't exactly right until you have to walk through it. And then you're like, eh, this isn't exactly right. And so that was where I was too, or that's where I turned out to be. And so I did some, some modifications to the Paragon board. Um, the one thing I'll tell you that you're going to hate, and it's because there's no way around it, is you should still go and watch the original video. Because a lot of it is the same. There's a lot of explanation about why you do certain things um, just in general and on this build. And I'm not going to go over that again. right? And so you're going to miss 75% of the content unless you also go back and look at that video. For this one, I just want to focus on a couple of things that changed. And I'll tell you why they changed. So Paragon board. Let's start just to say, okay, this will give you a sense for why I say you need to look at the first one. Because I'm going to say things like, this starting board, it's the same. Didn't really change anything. Second board is Inner Beast, just like it was before. Didn't really change anything. Um, number three is Constricting Tendrils. Didn't really change anything. All of these are the same as they used to be, okay? Now, here's what's different, or here's one of the ones that's different. In the original setup, for board four, I was taking Height and Mouse, which a lot of people do, all right? I was not overly thrilled, and you'll hear my explanation on that original video. I wasn't overly thrilled, though, with the utility I was getting out of it. It sat in this position. It's now gone, and now we have survival instincts, which I think I can fairly say almost no one actually uses um, in, a, in, a, in a bulwark build. And I'll be bold enough also to say, and I think they're wrong, and you, know, you judge for yourself. Uh, obviously, I didn't change it because I thought it was a bad idea. But, you know, who am I? I'm some idiot. As you can see, we come up here just to activate two of the rare nodes. So this seems like, if you think about it, <laughs> a, a, a pretty, a pretty uh, obvious synergy, right? Damage reduction while fortified, fortified generation. Forget the fact that it's called Bulwark. There is no barrier gen. It doesn't affect Bulwark damage. I don't know exactly why they called it Bulwark, but, you know, let's be frank for the build, you spend most of your time in this build fortified, right? And so if you can get even more damage reduction while fortified built up, and if you can generate fortified more quickly, all of that is useful. So what we get out of this, because we're able to hit, you know, the bonus, we get our 12% damage reduction right, well fortified, which is fairly significant, plus we get 6.5% fortified generation. We come over here, spearhead, huge bonus damage to healthy enemies. The armor, do not care. But we are plus 75% damage to healthy enemies because we hit spearhead and we hit the, the bonus. Now, why do we care about that? It's really simple the genius of the bulwark setup, right, is that you mostly one-shot people, right? You click, boom, dead. That really does mean that you're almost always applying damage to healthy people. And now we're applying 75% more of it. That is, again, a pretty natural synergy, right? The armor here, don't care about, I'm taking it to get to, hey, more damage to healthy, more damage to healthy more damage to healthy. Come over here, more damage reduction while fortified, and more, and more, fortify, and more, and more damage. So there's actually a really nice cluster of magic nodes around both of these, and both of the rares, very useful. And you get sort of a sense, like I'm not gonna count it out, but we got like three, 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 I guess I am gonna count it out. Then you get like four, three, three, so you're talking about like 12, 13, 14 points is what this entire board consumes. That's fairly significant, and it's a fairly significant savings. I think it's a significant improvement over Height and Malice. I think it gives you a lot more for the, for the, the bang for the buck, and I think that your, you know, your buck is fairly clean, which is to say you don't spend a lot doing this. We don't take survival instincts. We don't want to because wear bear form is just not something that we're basically ever in. So who cares? 
Um, again, grizzly is werebear form. Um, battle worn hide is werebear form. Glyph socket could be useful. Um, damage will help while well, you're healthy. That's pretty good. Obviously, if you were going to play the low life variant, you wouldn't want that. You come over here again, werebear skill damage and overpower. If you were playing like a pulv build, if you're playing a pulverized build, or you were playing like pulver slide, or if you'd slotted in pulv into like a trample slide build, then this would be super useful, right? Um, not that's not our build, that's not what we do, that's not how we kill people. We don't care. Okay, let's go back in because again. Inner Beast was our second. This is, again, the same. Earth and Devastation, it's the exact same as in our um, previous, in my previous video, in my previous build, in the previous whatever. And it's taken in the same slot as five. And we take essentially the same, um, essentially the same things here. I don't know if... I got to come over here and collect Resolve last time. And I think actually... I only collected this to burn a couple of points. I had, you know, in a lot of these builds, you end up with whatever, five points, six points left over. This is not that big a deal. Resistance to all elements. The willpower is completely nonsense, just not useful at all. I don't care about that. But what I strongly suspect is that I had, you know, a couple of points left to, to burn. And so I took that. I always took Crushing Earth. Um, what you just saw in the previous build was, you know, you'd sort of dead end right about there, and then you wouldn't take this tail. I will come back, because I, I know there is one thing I change in Inner Beast here. Shape-shifting skill damage, again, it's just kind of irrelevant, but the point is, I think I spent literally just these two points to get it, and, you know, it, it's whatever. It, it means when I claw people, like I get a little bit more, it's irrelevant. But, you know, you have two points, what, you know, what are you going to do? Where else are you going to spend them? You got to spend them someplace. Can't take them home with you. Might as well use them. Um, and then Thunderstruck. Thunder was always the last board, right? Um, I believe that I'm, you know, I'm coming into this basically the same. And I think that I'm activating the exact same nodes that I used to activate. Um, and so I don't think that there are big changes here. And I don't think that there's anything significant. Um, similar to, you know, things that are just not optimized or optimizable. Like, I come over here and take Stormcaller. I don't care about Storm Skill damage. Or the Bulwark build doesn't care about Storm Skill damage. But you know what I do care about <laughs> is that for every Dex I purchase here, I get basically 10% increased Critical Strike damage. And look what they did, right? And I guess I should say, um, because I'm using, you know, because I'm using everything I'm using, we come around and this actually ends up being really significant. And so I don't care about Stormcaller. Again, if this was blank, it was just like a null section that you just had to take and it did nothing, still would have taken it. Still don't care. Because I'm just here to collect these two dexes to feed, um, this spirit in the glyph socket. And as you can see, 77.2 critical strike damage bonus just from this collection right here. Um, and then, you know, additional critical strike, additional damage to crowd control. Crowd control is not as important. Obviously, it's just not a common thing for us. Um, hubris here, I have experimented with like just how would you, I mean, you could just swap and skip it and come right up here. Like I could take this out buy this instead. I could take this out and I'd end up with an extra point to, you know, waste someplace else. Um, there's just not any point. There's not really a more elegant way to path to, to the glyph socket and then to path into deluge other than to come up and across. And so you end up taking a couple of things that, you know, they do something, but they don't really do much that you care about. Um, similarly, just like in the last time, restorative, don't care. It's not significant. Thunderstruck, don't care about storm skills, don't care about that, not important, that's why we don't take it. Tempest, you would love to get to. And, like, I wish there was a way to put this board in, sorry, some place where, you know, if there was a path out here where I could take it coming this way and then I could take it coming down, and so therefore I could get this by coming in this side, just like I get this by coming up. 
But there's just not. There's just not a way that I've seen, that I've figured out, that I've seen anyone else figure out for how you'd come up and capture Tempest as well. I wish I could. Like, critical strike damage, vulnerable damage, those are such good parts of our build, right? But it's not worth giving up the glyph socket, obviously, right? And it has, you know, for the most part, the same as Deluge. Deluge gives you additional to crowd control. This is really perfect because it gives you additional to uh, crit and to vulnerable. So I wish there was like a way to swap these, but there's not. And so you're not, you're probably not going to get that. And there's just nothing you can do about it. Um, lightning resilience, again, we don't care about. It. But all in all, like th these are the changes. And this in particular here with the... A survival instincts board is like the big, big switch. I'm much happier with how this plays. Um, these, the two rares are much more valuable to this build than, um, than what heightened malice provided before. And as I said in the previous build, heightened malice was just a way to path through, get to something else. He picked up a couple things. They had a little value and you moved on. Well, here I'm spending fewer points here than I was in the heightened malice board which is why I have points to waste in these couple of things I've pointed out, right? Um, but the two things that you do pick up, the two rares and their associated collection of magics are much more valuable than, you know, what we've had for other, for other setups or for things that I've seen other people do. So a uh, food for thought, um, do it, don't do it. I'll never know the difference. I hope this is helpful um, and uh, I'll talk to you again soon.